Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Sears the Vet. I am Dr. Sears. We're discussing today why you should never feed water from a nipple bottle to your little bottle fed babies. And I'm hoping that this message gets spread far and wide because I see it too often. Now before I jump in, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel by hitting the button down below. Thumbs up if you find it useful. Share it if you know anyone else who's weaning at the moment and I will see you in a sec. Right, let's dive straight in. So we're at that time of year now where the little bottle fed lambs, kids and calves are being weaned onto grass. If you need to know how to do that safely, please follow this link to the safe weaning episode. But anyone who's been through the weaning process knows how bad you feel when they're bleating away, expecting a bottle, crying like their little world is coming to an end and they will never know food or love ever again, right? I know how it feels. They seem so desperate and hungry. So I can understand why people do want to give them a bottle with water just to pacify the poor wee thing. But please don't do it and here's why. Water toxicity. It's not uncommon and it's not cool. Sounds crazy, right? Isn't water the ultimate more is better kind of substance? Not so, my friends. Anything at a high enough quantity can be toxic. Water is the perfect example of something that we tend to think of as really innocent. And here's what happens. If we have enough water fluxing into the bloodstream all at once, then it causes cells to take up that water really quickly just by osmosis. There's more water on the outside than there is on the inside of the cell, so they soak it all up. This causes swelling of cells and nervous signs. But often the first thing an owner will actually notice easily in a little pet, and what they usually come in to see me describing, is peeing blood. Now they're not actually peeing blood, but they are peeing red. The red blood cells are soaking up all of that water so much and so quickly that they burst. The body breaks down those broken red blood cells to try and get them out of the body. And what we're actually seeing being excreted in the urine is the red pigment from those red blood cells. It's still not a good sign, don't get me wrong. The red blood cells are being broken down very quickly. Red blood cells float around in the blood, go figure, and these are the cells that carry oxygen around the body. So these guys become very anemic very quickly. They're dull, lethargic, they stop drinking and can certainly die. Now, goats are particularly very high risk of this because they, fun fact, actually have the smallest, most fragile red blood cells out of all of our domesticated species but I have seen it plenty in lambs as well. Now, when we see it in animals that aren't being bottle fed, it's usually because they've actually been deprived of water for one reason or another, the system's broken down, um, you know, owners have gone around holiday, something like that, and then they've gorged themselves on water when it becomes available again. If you don't believe me, let's put this in perspective, okay? Let's work it out. Let's say you have a 10 kg goat kid at weaning, and you've been giving it bottles of 600 ml of milk just before weaning. This is not necessarily what I recommend, but this is commonplace. Please follow this link to see my recommendations on feeding and weaning. Now you then wean them, all right, let's imagine, but you feel so sorry for the little guy that you give it a 600 ml bottle of straight water. It's gonna guzzle it down, okay? It's been drinking milk from a teat its whole life so far. It's not gonna distinguish between milk and water. It's just gonna take what you're offering. This 600 ml bottle of water is 6% of its body weight, right? Now, if this was me, a standard 70 kg human, you've effectively just force fed me four and a half liters of water in one sitting. God forbid you give it more than one bottle throughout the day. All right, that's a lot, that's a lot of water. Now, if you followed my eight step safe weaning checklist, putting the link up here for you, your wee one hits the minimum age, stage of stomach development, diet, then you should have no reason to feed water from a bottle and tea, you don't need to. Of course, always offer fresh water in a container with nice low sides. They tend not to like drinking from things with high walls around their face, like buckets. So definitely have water on offer. This is a minimum welfare requirement by law, but please rest assured that if they are grazing consistently, and they should be if they're ready to be weaned, they will be getting the majority of their water requirements from the pasture. So if you don't actively see them sipping water from this container, don't freak out too much about it. There should be no need to feed water from a teat. Please just don't do it, it's not worth the risk. All right guys, please spread the word, share it with anyone that you think it would be helpful to that you know who's weaning right now because I, I see it every year on, on a handful of occasions and it's just really unnecessary. Don't forget to subscribe, red button down here, and I will see you for the next one. Okay, bye-bye.